Graniola. This is the Graniola channel and I'd like to tell you a folk tale. There are a number of absolutely incredible rock formations spread all around the world. One that I'd very much like to visit someday serves as the inspiration for this folk tale, which I'm calling Rock Road. Thousands of years ago, a huge giant and his very clever little wife lived a happy life on the rocky shores of a beautiful green land. They enjoyed their peaceful existence until one afternoon when the giant was out gathering periwinkles and he heard a screaming and yelling coming across the water. When he lifted his head, he saw what looked to be a gargantuan man who was totally red. So for this story, that's what we'll call him, Red. The first giant was actually what we call red-headed, which means that his hair looked orange, so we'll call him Orange. Orange didn't know what the red one was screaming about, but his peace had been disturbed, so now he was angry and started yelling too since there wasn't really too much else to do in that place thousands of years ago. This screaming and yelling and jumping around became a daily occurrence. Each day ended the same for both of them, with their throats raspy from shouting. After a while, the negative activity was starting to wear down Orange. He was losing sleep and becoming more and more irritable every day. This had been going on for some time. It could have been two weeks or it might have been more. When Orange woke up one morning in a particularly foul mood and ran down to the water's edge, picked up a huge boulder and hurled it out into the bay. At that moment, he formulated a plan. He was going to make a bridge over to the other giant and really teach him a lesson. His rage only increased as he dug out huge boulders one after another and flung them across the water. As he did this, he screamed out, challenging the red giant to a fight. Once he had repositioned the boulders to form a pathway, he started across. By the time he was nearing the middle of his bridge, he realized that his enemy was much bigger and scarier looking than he had imagined. And at that point, what had been pure rage was turning into trepidation. He reacted quickly, turning around and doubling back toward his home. And when he arrived, he explained excitedly to his wife how he had misjudged his opponent. By this time, the red giant was already tromping his way across the bay, bellowing that he was happy to accept the other man's challenge. Overhearing the thundering steps, the redhead's wife reassured him quietly. Please calm yourself, my dear. Everything will turn out all right. You must stop using your brawn and we'll use our heads. She told him they would need an illusion to trick the red giant. She directed him to curl up in a cradle that was in the corner of their house and then tucked blankets around him. When the giant banged at her door, she told him that her husband wasn't at home and politely invited him to come into the house to wait for him. The woman sweetly offered him a seat and said, I'm terribly sorry, my husband, I'm not certain when my husband's coming back. Why don't I give you something to eat while you wait? Red just grunted as she set a plate down in front of him with a loaf of bread on it. Inside the loaf of bread, she had hidden a sharp knife. The giant, who had fairly questionable table manners, grabbed the loaf without even thanking her and chomped down on it. Immediately, he let out a scream of pain because he had broken two teeth. She sweetly told him that that bread was her husband's favorite. In his great pain, he began to imagine what kind of incredibly strong person would be able to eat that type of bread. At that moment, the orange giant let out a huge burp. 
When Red swiveled around to face in the direction from which the burp had come, he saw the most enormous baby he had ever seen in his whole life. Oh, do you like babies? the wife asked. I'm so proud of my small son. He looks exactly like his father. He was rattled. He thought to himself, if that's the size of a baby, I certainly don't want to get into a fight with the father. He didn't put much more thought into his situation, but just jumped up from the table, ran out of the door, and didn't stop sprinting until he had completed the 25 miles that took him back to where he had come from. This ended the fighting between the two giants, but left the path of stones, which neither of them ever used again, because each one of them wanted very much to stay clear of the other. This is a tale that is told in Ireland. If you go to the northern part of that country, you can visit this site, which is called the Giant's Causeway. It stretches across the water to the Inner Hebrides in Scotland. 